Hello there. Today I'm tasting a German wine. This is a Riesling Cabernet from a producer called Kohler Rubrik in, in the Rheinfels. Um, and this is their um, Karlstadter Saumalgen um, Cabernet Trocken. Um, so um, the winery is uh, incredibly historic um, winery. I mean, they're, they're based right in the centre of the small town of Karlstadt, and their, their oldest winery building, for instance, is dates from 1565. So there's a lot of history involved there. More recently, they've made their name by making um, dry styles of wine, particularly Riesling from the um, Karlstadt at Salmogen site. Um, the estate was run up until um, about 2010 by um, a gentleman called uh, Bernard Philippi, um, and his family had owned um, owned the estate for, for over a century. Um, and he had some very firm ideas, and uh, the dry style with the different expressions of cabinet, um, Spätleser, Ausleser, uh, and the picking at different ripeness levels to create those, even though they're staying as dry, being fermented to dry wines. Um, it was central to the philosophy of the winery. When when he sold the winery, actually in um, two thousand and nine, I believe, to the to the Savage family, um, they decided to um, keep the the winemaking style almost exactly as it had been. So um, they took on somebody called uh, Dominic um, Sonner, who has you know continued with the tra traditional way that these wines have been made, um, very much respecting their history. Um, the um, uh, vineyard, uh, Karlstadt of Salmagen, um, technically would be allowed to call itself a Grosses Gewachs, but in fact the estate has been so um, firm about its, its desire to express these wines as um, uh, within the priority cat levels, Cabernet Spitzer, Ausleser, and and as Trocken wines, that when the um, the VDP, the organisation that sanctions the use of the Grosses Gewachs um, term, um, stopped the use of the, the term Trocken and, and started allowing people to uh, chapitalise wines from. Grosses Gewachs, um, Kohler Ruprik felt that they had to pull out and, and despite having been members of the VDP for, for 80 years um, they did that in 2014 because they wanted to stay true to the way they were making their wines. Um, Karlstadt of Selmagen itself um, arguably one of the great vineyards of, of Germany. Um, it's uh, a vineyard with limestone soils and, and actually sort of limestone of the sort that you find in places like sort of uh, Champagne and Chablis and Sancerre, um, so a continuation of those limestone formations, and um, it tends to produce a very sort of mineral style um, of, of, of wine. The um, translation of Salmagen, I believe, means pig's belly, um, so presumably that's a relation to the shape of the hill. Um, so it's a hill where the the aspect of the vineyard is to the south and the southeast. Um, and this is a historic old vineyard. I mean, the first the first parts of it were planted, I believe, in for, for the first time. I presume they've been replanted since um, in 1810, and then more of it was developed in 1836. And um, Kohler Rubrik, as a, an older estate, have um, four of the 40 hectares of this um, vineyard, and they have some of the best um, parts of the vineyard, unsurprisingly, being there earlier. Um, their winemaking is fairly straightforward. They, they try to intervene as little as possible. In the, in the vineyard, they're looking to select ripe fruit, obviously. They, they'll go through and they'll make sort of something up to five passes through the vineyard, and they'll pick the Riesling at different stages of ripeness. Um, so for um, Cabinet, they're looking for grapes that have achieved full ripeness. So they're looking for grapes that have turned from the green color um, to a, a pale yellow. Um, colour and I mean obviously they'll uh, analyse the sugar levels as well and that sort of thing but um, that's where they see the differentiation being for cabinet. Um, the wines are taken back to the, um, they're picked by hand, taken back to the cellars where they're um, crushed and left to soak overnight. Um, they're then pressed into old oak um, uh, ovals so um, some of these 
being sort of 100 years old with sort of beautiful carved faces and everything else. But So old oak that's not going to give an influence of wood but may give some uh, oxidative nature. I mean, in fact, these barrels are often lined with tartaric acid by, by this stage because there's been so much wine in, in them and this has built up over the years. The um, wines may receive a small amount of um, lees stirring, but that's not, not normally the case. Sorry, fermentation takes place with indigenous yeasts, um, so there, there is as little intervention as possible. Um, they'll stay um, in barrel until the following May uh, when they're racked, um, and in the, the June or July they'll be um, filtered very lightly and bottled, um, and then the wine is left to develop in bottle, really, to to fulfil its full potential. So let's have a look at the wine and see see what we make of that. Um, I guess it's a pale to medium uh, lemon yellow with a maybe a slight green hint, but not a, a huge amount. Um, the wine says it's twelve percent, I believe. Twelve percent alcohol, so it's been it's been fermented out to dryness, um, but. Yeah, you know, that's not sufficient to cause particularly tears to form on the glass. Um, so let's have a look at the aromas. The aromas are a, <coughs> uh, a combination. There's a very classic limey, maybe slightly waxy lime note. Not perhaps with the sort of the um, perfumed lime flower that you might get from a, a lighter wine from the Moselle or something like that, but nonetheless notes of lime but there's also a sort of a mineral a slightly saline note I suppose um, coming through there and, and I think that is is what they're, they're describing as the um, the note denoting the limestone soil um, so let's taste The wine is completely dry. The acidity is very crisp, quite sharp. And on a wine with less body, that would actually be quite um, quite unpleasant. But this has a nice roundness and a nice richness. There's a richness to the texture. Um, I suspect there's a little bit of glycerol in there, giving a, a sort of a, a fullness. And also, I suppose, the 12% alcohol is rounding rounding the wine out there. Um, I said the liminess, there's a wax in it, a slightly oily character, it's just the very first starts of some sort of um, slightly petrolly development on, on the notes there. Um, the freshness from the acidity is keeping the, the, the flavours quite long um, and you've got that combination of lime and um, saline minerality on, on the finish there. Um, I, it's unexpected for me. I guess I, th I think of a cabinet there as likely to have a little bit of sweetness to balance it out. Instead of this, this has that sort of sort of rich, slightly toasty lime note. Um, I suppose there may be a, a slight fermentation note of um, slightly sulfury note in, in, in there, adding a, um, a bit of bit of wet stone minerality that sort of sort of thing but largely nice uh, unexpectedly ripe fruit with um, you know a light to medium body um, slightly rounded finish but a nice long flavor so yeah that's uh, Kohler Ruprix Kalstadter Salmagen 2020 uh, Riesling Cabinet Trocken thank you for joining us uh, if you've enjoyed the video do please feel like it Feel free to like and share, and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye now.